Interestingly, none of them put out statements to their own employees afterwards, which is very typical when, when, when executives go to these big, important meetings. It wasn't a peep out of any of them because their employees are, are, are there's a lot of uh, discomfort within the employee ranks, and a lot of employees have put together statements uh, about this and signed different things around Muslim registries and things like that. So it's interesting they said nothing at the start and they said nothing at the beginning, which should tell you a lot. Um, yeah. When you feel that you've made some progress, you make a statement, and then none of them made a statement, and I find that fascinating. So. You bring up uh, no, the I issue No, I feel the of, same way, John. I feel <laughs> you yeah. bring up the issue of Trump's children uh, with three seats at the table. Yeah. Uh, you say that some of mm -hmm. these executives found that appropriate. Uh, but we're having to get used to the idea that uh, family, as Kramer said this morning, in real estate is a real deal. I mean, it, these, these, these are executives okay. who are being groomed to run this business. Uh, why shouldn't they be allowed to advise and share in what their, uh, their family member, the president-elect, is doing? Because of their conflicts of interest. Who, what executive wouldn't pay to be in the room with the top leaders of tech? That nobody gets a front row seat like this, and they're running a separate company that's supposed to be separate. Um, again, it also took up space from real key tech leaders if he really wants to hear about it. Those are three seats that could have been taken up by people like Jack Dorsey, um, Aaron Levy, uh, Stacey Philpot Brown of TaskRabbit, all people who would have contributed a lot of thoughts that might have been helpful to the president elect. And again, it's just, you know, what, what I think one of the quotes was I think this is now a family business, the U.S., but it's not a family business. And so, you know, it's, I think they were right to feel it was inappropriate that they were there. And again, Again, any executive would have paid a lot of money to be sitting next to Tim Cook, Elon Musk, Sheryl Sandberg, and many others, and could not, were not able to because they're not related to the president-elect. Kara, on the issue of how technology executives, maybe just executives in general, deal with a chief mm -hmm. executive or an executive branch that has different values than the ones they espouse, I, I wonder what you think about this. I've been pondering, how is the standard different for a U.S executive versus China versus Turkey versus some of mm -hmm. these other countries where companies you know Apple Google Facebook come to mind they have this policy of engagement with these administrations mm -hmm. who they disagree with on values yeah sure I didn't say they shouldn't engage I said they this is the United States of America and they should have put their I think a lot of their employees wanted this to happen I think they could have as a group of people gotten together and said here are the issues that are important to us immigration tolerance um, encryption whatever they wanted to say but I think they just didn't speak out because they're trying to get along which I, I understand that completely but these are the leaders of the most important companies probably in the world at this point and so I feel that they are just as big as important they're, they're, they're important leaders and so they have an important voice and they have an important influence and and didn't really use it here um, and I get I get why they did it and we can all say oh of course they can't be impolite but there's a ways there's ways to put your opinion out and be polite at the same time and, and, and get your viewpoints put through. And that's the whole point of a democracy, I think, last time I looked. So I feel like they should have. They should have talked to their employees about it. Um, and again, that they didn't put out, I, I haven't seen every single company, but it doesn't look like any of them put out, uh, except for Jeff Bezos, which was a wider statement. None of them put out a public statement afterwards or before. Interesting. Right. That's interesting uh, to me. We, these we, people never shut up other times. Yeah. So I don't know. We did hear a lot from them you know. uh, following the election itself. Mm -hmm. Finally, um, what do you make of Teal's role going forward? Is he really the gatekeeper to Trump when it comes to Silicon Valley? Well, it seems like it. I mean, they're obviously going to establish their own relationships. A lot of these people had never met Trump who went to the meeting, so that's an interesting thing, to having met him for the first time. And he's a very familiar person. You know, he once he meets you, he feels like it looks like he does that a lot. He's quite good at it. Um, I think Jared Kushner, as I noted in the article, I think a lot of them were struck by the involvement of Jared Kushner, who's the husband of Ivanka Trump. Uh, Ivanka Trump. Um, so he's been a point person on this, and they sort of felt like perhaps he might become a point person reaching out to tech. He has, a, he has some experience in the area. His brother has a, uh, has a company, Oscar Health. Uh, so he's, uh, he's familiar with the sector. Um, so I, that, they, they did mention Jared Kushner several times, and no other administration person, not Steve Bannon, who was in the room, not uh, Rents Priebus, no, none of them popped out to any of the, any of the people 
I talk to. So. Also interesting to note, Safra Katz, CEO of Oracle, has joined mm -hmm. the transition team. She arrived early at yeah. Trump Tower, apparently for meetings with other members of the transition team and, and uh, you know, people who have been nominated yeah. to be part of the cabinet. Kara, uh, we yep. appreciate Yeah, she was there. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.